does he also drinks a lot of coffee ton of coffee do you want to drink coffee as well yeah you want to drink a lot of coffee maybe i mean if he offers him coffee he'll take it it's like you know you're at a bar with an alcoholic and they keep pouring you drinks he will keep pouring you coffee it's up to you how much you want to keep up with kev's coffee regimen uh, along with how amped he is nearly constantly but that is kind of his day he just drinks coffee yells at people accuses people of crimes drinks more coffee what jim needs to do is make all his coffee disappear one night i'm real curious to see what kevin would be like i mean i'm sure he'd freak out at first but without the coffee he wouldn't have the energy to maintain it he would just take a handful of stimulants and crush them above his eyes and let them rain down into a soft eye mucus (laughs) while screaming so yeah so that's that's your time with kev He's a nice laid back guy. Simone, you are not in in the same uh, kind of awfulness as some of your friends. Uh, you you are not attached to any ELO member, so you got that going for you. Um, yep. You did have uh, your own thing. So you get a message at some point on your Moby from user you don't recognize. It's written out fairly simply. It says, heard you were looking for training. Meet me at the Gangster's Paradise. And she'll probably be heading out there, probably on the bus or whatever. The bus. Okay, that's fine. Once you arrive there, we'll say later in the day after Marisol and Lewis were there, you will see that Miss B is there at the Gangster's Paradise looking rather irritated and that there is a man wearing a lot of purple there at the bar who's just kind of like spinning his hand through the air as he talks uh, and big flourishes. So then I said get the fuck out of my way and they didn't so you know fuck them up badly very badly it was uh beautiful i'd say right at the right spot at the right time he actually slowly turns around ah there you are greetings uh yeah he puts down the very he's drinking from a very tiny tiny glass that he puts down very daintily onto the bar counter. Hello, I have received your messages, or rather, your wishes through an intermediary. I am Lord Cambria, and you are Simone O'Connor. He kind of like laughs to himself. <laughs> what's so funny oh nothing it's the name is very hmm how do i say it doesn't curve quite right but it is really nothing you wish to learn about a certain thing correct 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 you don't seem to have too much get up and go about it show some enthusiasm first lesson what does your smile look like and she gives like a smile uh probably a fairly big smile hmm the angle it is a bit off just a touch just a bit now the problem that most people have is that they assume such things are changed by plastic surgery but no 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 no. it is a matter of muscle memory you must remember a good thing and then you will smile like an angel instead of like um you know you're at a job interview so kind of like how the body is uh composed of uh different but reactive synergies between contraction and constriction well that is a very complicated response i suppose maybe i mean it could be that could all all very well be true i I guess i mean sounds like you have it all figured out well it's more biology than anything ah biology not my strongest subject but i am very talented when it comes to mechanics. For example, would you like something to drink? Sure. Ah, then what would you like? A silver Bordeaux? Hmm. Okay. Bartender, if I could have one silver Bordeaux. 
the bartender, who's, I guess, the replacement for Marisol while she's not here, looks very confused at this order. Did you not understand what I said? I said one silver bar. bar no, please. I think that I must uh, reform my request. <laughs> the bartender seems to be at a loss, but slowly goes to get what they imagine is the silver Bordeaux. Once it arrives in a glass, Lord Cambria motions to beside him where the glass is. You see, here is your drink. And now, as your second lesson, spin the drink. She'll kind of sit down and move her finger to spin it? Like, like, like mix it with your finger? Yeah. Ah, very good. <laughs> you know, the last time that I had a student and I asked them to do that, they sat here for hours with their hands on either side of the drink, trying to figure out how to use their brain to mix it, like the psychic. But no, 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 no. No. The most simple application is the most effective. And to be honest, there are times when I don't feel 100%. I couldn't even summon the psychic power to do the, those things. But the finger, finger always works. Lesson number two, simplistic applications will always work. More complex ones, eh, not as reliable. And finally, lesson number three, your hair is far too straight. What? He actually starts spinning his finger towards your head. Hold still. Uh, she awkwardly holds still like, what? <laughs> yeah, he just begins to sort of dance around you for a moment, like in a circular motion. It's pretty swift. He's like, it's like he's doing flamenco almost. You can feel his fingers kind of like moving through your hair quickly. And then it doesn't take long. He just sits back down afterwards. Aha! Now, behold. And he pulls a mirror out of his coat and holds it up to you. He has curled your hair. It looks very curly now. <laughs> she kind of looks, looks probably pretty amazed. Stunning. You will be a star with such hair. But this is the third lesson. The spin occurs in nature. It can be observed in many different forms and fashions, even in clothing. He like actually runs a finger over his curly eyebrow to demonstrate it like <laughs> straightens out and then curls back up immediately. It can be observed in your drink. He uh, points to your drink, which is still kind of spinning. It can be observed anywhere. The difficulty here on the moon, however, is that your hair was straight before I curled it. If it was not curled, what spin would there be to observe? You need a tool, proper measurement tool in order to truly engage the he leans sort of in very close actually golden ratio and she'll kind of like what is the golden ratio he puts a hand over your mouth Shh, that is our little secret golden ratio is <laughs> the very basis of spin the perfect turn and curve of the universe without it there would be no beauty, no perfection, or, or rather, perfection. You will discover very quickly that if you wish to truly master the art of the spin, the golden ratio is the promised land. It is the holy of holy, the most sacred part of the art. In time, you will understand why. But until then, enjoy your drink and your luscious curls. And let us talk a bit about, hmm, why is it snowing? I wish to know. And she'll kind of take a drink. It was raining a lot earlier. It's difficult to say why it's snowing now. I see. The snow will provide a unique opportunity to practice. I like it. But it is a bit, hmm, chilly. I prefer hot weather, hot women, hot meals, and hot peppers. <laughs> Is there a reason why? Well, of course. To engage the spin, one must remain fluid, heated, 
alive. The energy of life is what we use in the spin. Without the energy, what motion could there be? What life could there be? So we must sometimes push ourselves just a little bit further. Wouldn't you agree, Miss B? Zappelli. B actually quickly cranks her head over into Lord Cambria's direction. When are you going to get the hell out of my bar, you damn weirdo? Ha ha ha. That is no way to talk to an old friend, B. She is, how do you say, um, hmm, intimidated, I think, by my skills. They are quite, quite good. Much better than the ripple. He says very loudly. Miss B kind of narrows her eyes and furrows her brow. The hell did you just say? Get the hell out of my bar before I kick your ass. <laughs> Let us go. I will pay for my drink. He puts down a little bit of money, the exact change, no tip. And we <laughs> shall de depart. <laughs> and he kind of like dances out the door. <laughs> she, she's kind of there like, uh, and probably gets up. Pays for her drink with a tip. This is, uh, uh, sorry. <laughs> she kind of walks out. So right before you go, you notice the bartender tried to reach for the money that he put down. And uh, Lord Cambria put down. The money <laughs> actually spins around on the counter and evades the bartender. <laughs> Uh, so that's just what they're doing. They're just trying to trying to slap a hand down and not quite getting it. <laughs> oh dear. So throughout your day, uh, you can spend your time with Lord Cambria, who is extremely eccentric, and people don't know what the fuck to do with this guy. <laughs> but he's he's not hostile. He's very friendly to people. He's just he's a very strange man, and uh, he doesn't fit in in Suffragette City at all. Like people notice, this is a man of Clash City. So he's very flamboyant, very, very flamboyant. And he would tell you about that life briefly about Clash City too. share some information about that. Like in Clash City, it's like all fighting game characters pretty much. And if you're not a fighting game character, you're a background character. And if you're a background character, there's a good chance your shit's going to get fucked up at some point, either as somebody else's backstory or as the stage <laughs> for one of their fights. <laughs> so you can either be the guy on the bicycle that's in the background, you know, going by as two people are fighting, or you can be the guy fighting. Basically, the stage hazards are the poor people who are not yeah. fighting game characters. Yeah, and they aspire to do it. And you'll and there are people that go out and be like, "Yeah, I'm quitting my job. I'm learning. Uh, you know, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna learn jujitsu, guys. I'm not gonna work this nine to five anymore. I'm gonna be a fighter." <laughs> um, Every time I do. Some idiot just falls in right into my bar. Yeah, that's sort of the setup. It's like sort of like street stylers here in the city, except instead of styling, they're fighting constantly, always fighting all the time. Night and day, there's a fight happening somewhere in Clash City. And the law enforcement seems to be OK with it. You know, you get a license for it, be a fighter, and then you're just a fighter. You're just fighting and they just, they just put up with it. <laughs> that's that's Clash City. That's what Clash City's energy is like. It's a it's a fun place if you know how to fight. If you don't know how to fight, don't go. <laughs> Would be his advice. But that's Lord Cambria. It's pretty well to do. You will notice though, as a biologist and someone with some medical background, uh, there are times when he has to stop and cough or catch his breath. Uh, he has some kind of thing wrong with him, but um, he doesn't talk about that at all. He is way more interested in life and hot peppers and hot women and hot drinks and hot meals and hot everything. I really want to know what woman would touch that with a 40 foot pole. All of them. He's actually extremely <laughs> successful with women. <laughs> Jesus Christ, of course he is. He's a fucking Frenchman with magic powers. Why wouldn't he be fucking successful? Because he's ridiculous. I'm sorry, Dog the Bounty Hunter is fucking... That man's ridiculous, and you think he's not just fucking all the time? You know who else is ridiculous and super purple? Prince. The Prince? What do you think <laughs> his ratio is like when it comes to picking up women? Honestly, this guy's, like, really aggro. He's got, like, a lot of that forward kind of, like, man energy. So, yeah, he's probably fine, man. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately... <laughs> Lord Cambria might be our sexiest character. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> On that note though, he, I will I will point out he takes the student teacher relationship very seriously. If you become a student of his, he doesn't disrespect you. He doesn't he doesn't do any he doesn't do any weird shit that uh is outside of training. He takes this shit super seriously. In fact, he takes it so seriously, maybe he's pinning too much hope on you. It's hard to say. Um, but he's he's very, very hopeful that you will be a 
good spin user and maybe even and he will say it often better than him you're not on a bracelet system like the rest of them so at least you have that <laughs> although one yeah. wonders what it would be like to be stuck with lord cambria <laughs> for fucking 24 hours oh my god just be driven insane <laughs> insane